they see that there are 84,000 parts in the Pali Canon. How they count a part, I don't know. But the point is, there's a lot. But as St. John's like to say, it all comes down to one mind. The mind has lots of different defilements, lots of different tricks. There's a, one of the passages in the canon where an elephant trainer says that dealing with an elephant, it, within a week you know all the elephant's tricks, the ways it would try to avoid being trained. But with a human being, he's that like, human beings are hard to read. So we've got this complicated mind, and there's lots and lots of different teachings to help us deal with the particular complications. But when you're sitting down to meditate, you want to simplify things as much as you can. Bring everything down to one, just being with one object, right here, right now. And it's not that much you have to keep in mind. There are the Four Noble Truths, and each of them has a duty. And your duty right now is to develop the path. The path is going to be your breath, the mind with the breath. That's all you have to pay attention to. And it may happen that trou troubles come up in the meditation, problems come up, and you can remember something you read that will help. But for the most part, try to file it away. Or as John Munn used to say, put it in the cabinet. All the books you've read, put them back in the cabinet, put them back on the shelf. And just be with your breath. Get to know the mind with the breath right here, right now with as little interference as possible from what you may have read. When something comes up in the meditation and you wonder what it is, after the meditation you can go and find some reference to it. But don't let the books run your practice. You want the breath, the mind in the present moment to run your practice. Because that's where the real problems are. The problems are not in the books. The problems are here. One, how to get the mind to be with the breath. Two, how to think about the breath in a way that helps you to settle down. And the more you can bring your own ingenuity to this, the better. As for what the next step is going to be, there's no need to know. You work on this step. Give it your full attention. And Paul put one of the famous Ajans in Thailand was a student of Ajahn Sao. He was a John Munn's teacher. John Sao didn't have that many students. And the Bhaput was saying that when people would come to meditate with him, he'd say, okay, repeat Bhutto, or focus on the breath. And they'd ask him, what's going to happen when I do this? And he said, don't ask, just do it. What does Bhutto mean? Don't ask, he's saying. Whatever questions, don't ask, just do the practice. Then after they'd done it, they'd come back and they'd have this problem or that problem, and he'd tell them, okay, that's right or that's wrong. But wouldn't tell them too much beyond that. John Fuang was the same sort of teacher. When people came to practice with him, he'd hand them the seven steps to John Lee's method too. And after they'd read that, he'd say, okay, put it aside, now focus on your breath. And again, as for what would happen, it was a very individual matter, and he would tell people not to worry about what was going to happen. The question is, what's happening right now? Give it your full attention. If you spend too much time glancing down the path, you don't look at where you're stepping. And you may be stepping on something important. These little plants that are coming up in the path, some of them are, are weeds, and it's okay to step on them, but some of them are potentially trees, something with flowers or fruits or shade they can offer. So you want to be careful how you step. So with each breath, pay attention to that breath. When you find you can stay with the breath comfortably, if things feel good, and then you can put aside all the, even the direct thought and evaluation, the chatter about the breath, and just be with the breath. And at this point, you don't have to make any comments on it at all, aside from just breath, breath, breath. Remember one time I was 
practicing with the John Fu, I'm going to be going on my alms round and just breath, breath, breath. And something in my mind said, this is dumb. You're not showing any intelligence at all. And then I realized, well, how do I have to, why do I have to be intelligent with commenting on the, the breath? What's there to be original about being in concentration? And John Lee would often say, there are times when you have to be willing to be stupid. In other words, you don't have to have a clever comment on what you're doing right now. Just be with what you're doing. Be with the sensation. Learn how to make that a skill. It's a skill to learn how not to talk to yourself and yet still be alert. It's a good skill to have. It's like when I was learning Thai boxing back when I was a layperson. The very first thing they taught was how to get out of a clinch. In other words, your opponent's coming at you, how do you back off so as not to expose yourself? The same thing's going to happen when things come up in the mind. Sometimes you're not ready for them, you're not ready to deal with them. So you've got to back off. you just got to go back into the concentration. You want to have this safe place. So make it solid. Make this a skill that you really know how to do. Think of those harmoniums on Mercury in the book Sirens of Titan. They don't have much to say. Just here I am, here I am, here I am, and so glad you are, so glad you are, so glad you are. That's all the conversation is. But they're very happy. And the same can happen in your meditation. When you finally settle down, the breath is comfortable, everything's there, and you just learn how to maintain that without worrying about sounding intelligent to anybody else. You don't have to record your great insights. In fact, a lot of great insights are things you have to be afraid of. As you probably read something and you suddenly decide that your meditation experience confirms what you read. Watch out for that. So always be ready to pull out of the pull out of the difficult situation. Just be still. Just focus on one thing. Bring everything right here. And don't be afraid that you're going to be dumb. The real insights come when you really are fully here and noticing what's going on on its own terms. So learning is a treasure, and it's good to have some background, at the very, in the very least, in the basic steps of the path, the basic, basic steps of the meditation. But let your, don't let your learning clutter things up. And don't think that you have to have it all on your, at your fingertips all the time. Otherwise, you're going to be like the proverbial lady in the in the Thai saying, the old lady who carries around a big bale of straw all the time. Yai Hop Fang. She knows that someday she may need a bale of straw, so she's got it on her back all the time. Don't carry your learning around that way. Put it back in the cabinet so you can give your full attention to the breath. This quality of intentness, jitta in Pali, is part of the foundations of right effort, and it's in the basis of success, or the basis of power that leads you to concentration. The more you can give this your full attention right here to this one thing, the greater your skill and the more you're going to come to know things that are not in the books. After all, nobody was able to catch nirvana and put it in a book. All we have are pointers. But here you, what you want here is the real thing. This is where it's going to be found. So keep watching right here. And as you get more familiar with the place, the more you'll see.